We're sisters, best friends, and authors on a mission to help you stoke your creative fire and live the life of your dreams. We believe that purpose fuels passion and that creativity is your secret weapon for mass construction. There's never been a better time to bless the world with your dream realized. You're listening to The Kate and Abby Show. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Kate and Abby Show. Today, we're talking about something super special, something very exciting, which is all of the details, well, not quite all of them, but answering your questions and talking about spilling the tea a bit about our co-write project, which we are working on currently. We're writing a book series together. And if you've been following our social channels, you've probably seen us hint about this and talk about it a little bit, but we thought we should devote a whole episode to talking about our co-write book project and answering some of your questions. So you guys have a lot of great questions that came in on my Instagram because I put up a post a few days ago about that and you guys asked some great questions. We're going to answer some of those questions today and just talk about this exciting new project. And this is something that has gone back into like it's been an interesting experience because we started writing co-writing books together a long time ago, but now we're doing it again more seriously, I would say. So it's going to be fun to talk to talk about that today and look at how our process has changed. Yeah, bring some new experience to the table. Yeah. I think a lot of you guys probably are considering maybe co-writing a book or what's that experience like, at least wanting to understand it a bit better. It's something that doesn't get talked about enough in the writing world, and yet you don't even think twice when you see many, many books in bookstores that are authored by this person and this person and this person, but yet it's like, okay, well, that's co-authoring. How do we do that? How do we go about that? And how is it different for the other, like from one author to the next? Right. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about that today. But before we get started, we have to thank our sponsors who are you. That's right. You guys are the ones who support this show and to keep it going. And we so appreciate your support. So if you get value out of this podcast, go to patreon.com slash the Kate and Abby show and help us keep this podcast alive and free of interruptions. Okay, so I think we should start by answering the questions, obviously. And I think a good question to answer, there's a lot of questions that came in that were like repeat. So I tried to take like the most popular ones and put them together. We're going to try to answer all of them, but we'll see how far we get. Let's get into it. <laughs> yes. The first question that I think is a good one to kick this off with is what is the genre and what is it about? And I know we're not going to tell, like, we're not going to give major spoilers of what it's about, but I think we should start off by like at least hinting at like the genre and a little, give, give our listeners a little taste of what this is going to be like the vibe. Yeah. I usually talk about the vibe without like really uh, giving a lot of detail about the story itself. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to let you answer it then. The genre. Oh, man. Okay. The genre is more in the realm of action adventure slash fantasy and not like high fantasy, like kings and queens and dragons, but more like urban fantasy. Yeah, definitely more urban fantasy action yeah. adventure. Yeah. So it's going to feature some elements that are familiar to Katie and what she writes mm -hmm. usually in yeah. like the Blood Race series um, as far as like some fantasy elements mixed in with the real world. And I don't want to give too much like details about it, but <laughs> that's basically the genre. Action adventure, fantasy with a little bit of like mystery thriller thrown in there as well. Yeah. So that's as we continue writing it, I think eventually we're going to say, you know, hey, if this and this were pulsed in a blender, yes, the smoothie would taste <laughs> similar to this or, you know, fans of this book and that book. But I feel like we're not even at the stage where we're going to say too much about it yet because we're in such early writing stages. How many words yeah. do we have right now? Um, I think we're close we're to 31,000 in wow. the first book. That's one of the things. Okay. This is amazing when it comes to co-writing. It goes by so quick. Yeah, it really does. So much <laughs> faster than when you're writing by yourself. And it's like, whoa, 30,000 words just went by? That's amazing. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? So if your goal is to write a 100,000 word novel, 
It's like, oh, wow, dang, we're already, already almost halfway. Yeah, you Yet only have to write 50,000. Yeah. Then the other person writes 50,000, which leads us to the next question, actually, which is one I saw so much, is how do you split the workload between two people but still make it cohesive? Mm. I think that, and I feel like you would say the same thing that I'm going to say, we'll see, um, play to your strengths. Mm. Yeah. What is one of you guys good at and then what is the other one good at <laughs> you know what i mean and yeah. if you're both great at the same things cool then you can figure out different ways to distribute that to distribute the workload but for us we're such we have just that yin yang energy going on where we're very different in our process so it's very easy to see oh abby should absolutely be doing this aspect and i should absolutely be doing that aspect. Mm -hmm. I would say that you've done, you've definitely put more words into the project as far as actual words written plus outline. <laughs> the outline. Seeing as I have, <laughs> I did contribute to the outline, but you really wrote it all out to an extent that I can't even comprehend, which is amazing yeah. and a talent in and of itself. Thank so you. if you are a planner, if you're a plotter and the other author is the other co-writer is not me right here I'm pointing to myself then let the person who's good at planning do the planning do the actual writing let them draw the map you know so to speak and if you're good at and literally I was ideas, literally drawing a map the other right. day <laughs> yeah I walked in and she's drawing a map I'm like wow that's awesome I'm more of an ideas person. I'm really good at brainstorming things. I'm good at tossing different ideas out there, looking at flipping something on its head and looking at it from every possible angle, yeah. stewing over an idea until it's like, oh, that's a great idea. And then bringing it to Abby and being like, Abby, what about this? What about this? What about this? And, that's and then the, we like dirt that's dive the it over and over and over again. Yeah. In my is. opinion, is like brainstorming sessions mm -hmm. together and even like, you know, we'll we'll get so carried away. We'll be like talking late into the night about it. And then after our brainstorming session, a lot of times I'll be like, okay, I'll write all of that down. And then I'll go write it down in the outline and like fill in all the little like details in the outline itself. But it's really like both of us that came up with these ideas. But I'm definitely more of like, okay, I need to put it all on paper and like make it orderly yeah <laughs> you know yes I'm definitely like the orderly organization person so I think that the, those two strengths play well together yeah absolutely and agree we've like always we've always been really in tune with each other yeah so I think that helps a lot like does, to know sure. the person really well and to already know that you work together well even if it's not on a co-writing project even if it's like on another project yeah um or on other things that you've done together or worked together in the past and be like okay i know we work well together so right. this would probably work well i think that's good. why like the group project tm is always infamous for being a bad experience because yep. <laughs> most people especially when you're going into a project with people you don't know that well it's like uh you know the, the clashing personalities or being hesitant to tell someone hey i i think we should do it this way and you have all these different dynamics going whereas if you know the people and you're really close with them and you already get how they work you understand what makes them tick you understand their thought process it's going to be a lot easier to work with their flow of thought mm, and yeah. i feel like we really get each other's flow of thought so well like to yes. the point of being able to finish each other's sentences so we're really good with like you know uh, brainstorming something is a really just has a great rhythm to it our brainstorming yes sessions. yeah yeah they really do um which the next question is kind of like the one before it do you have to wait until the other person's finished with their part and then switch back and forth or, and another question sort of similar to that is how are you assigning the writing? Are there two point of views and you write each, one of you writes each one, which we have, I think, mentioned in the past, I'm pretty sure, briefly mentioned that, yes, there are mostly two point of views, mainly two point of views to start in this book. Two main characters. Yeah, two main characters. And Kate has one and I have the other one, basically. Yeah. So we're writing from first person, which is really interesting super interesting and it takes out the element of trying to make 
my voice sound like yours and make your right, voice sound like mine. because it's just your voice yeah. and you climb into that character and you stay in that character. Right. And it, it really enhances the reading experience, yeah. I think. Because it, it makes feels it so different. Unique. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be really cool to see the finished product. Yeah. And especially to have like to see when readers start reading it. I'm like really looking forward to that. And Yeah, because we're not going to tell you yeah, who's who. Yeah, we're not going to tell you We're not going to tell you who's who. So you guys will get to guess. Yeah, we'll probably eventually tell you. But yeah, like, eventually. Like once it comes out, but we'll book. probably have like an extra special like <laughs> giveaway or something. And like whoever guesses it right first <laughs> or the first like few people or something. Yeah, that'd get be fun. some sort of prize. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> That'd be yeah, really and it's been it's been really interesting to see just like, wow, okay, we don't have to like try super hard to jump yeah. in and out of voices because it's like okay, just stay in this character, right? You know, and and it's much easier that way. It is very easy, and it makes it a different, uh, more dynamic experience. Yeah, it's so different from writing a book on your own. Yes. And it's so different for me, even this genre being very, very familiar to me. Yeah. <laughs> it still feels completely different because it's like more like almost an interactive game. <laughs> I don't know how to even describe it because I will, you know, usually Abby will read me her chapter and then I'll be like, oh, okay. So how's my character going to respond? You know what I mean? So it's almost like a game. Yeah. In a way. It it's makes like, well, choose your own adventure yes, books. Yes, <laughs> because when I'm writing the whole thing, I'm like, well, I already know everything that happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? So part of it's almost like this little element of surprise. Yeah. <laughs> it's and It's really been, fun. Yeah. And it's been like kind of a learning experience for me as well, because I'm I'm that person who, as everyone knows, I have to have like this giant outline and have everything pretty much figured out beforehand before I start writing the first draft. And so it's been like a little bit, um, a little bit of a trusting process. <laughs> Not that I don't. She trust says, you. <laughs> even though she has like thirty thousand words of outline. Okay. <laughs> 18,000. But, but what I mean is like, I'll have gaps in the outline of like, okay, this is Katie's chapter. I'm not really sure what's going to happen there. But like, I'm sure it will be good when we get there and we'll brainstorm it and stuff. But it's like, you just have to step out. Step out. And yep. trust that that will come. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, and I don't even know why that occurs to me or like intimidates me because I've written books in the past where I will change giant elements of the plot and like delete big pieces of the outline and rewrite it so it shouldn't even freak me out but it's it's funny how like yeah. the different dynamics of writing with another person yeah it's like not as <laughs> it's not as planned out even yeah. though even though it really is because like you know like i said the outline is getting really long yeah it's, it's eighteen thousand words and counting right now <laughs> Yeah, but, that's amazing. That's amazing. And I haven't even outlined the climax. It's funny because I'm like, okay, Katie, um, what's the climax going to be? Like, I have to see this in my mind. And she's like, I just have to think about my next chapter. Yeah, I can't literally. think about the climax right oh, Because now. a lot of times that part won't come to me until yeah. it's time for it to come to me. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> like, well, yeah, yeah but like, like I, I usually don't feel comfortable like starting until I know how yeah. it's going to end. So, right. No, exactly. So, these are the dynamics, guys. Yeah. These are the very vastly different dynamics that are very fun to work with. And it can be really fun. It sh and we're a perfect example of the fact that you don't have to be similar in right. the way you write. You don't have to be like, oh, well, that person's, you know, a plotter. This, I'm a pantser, vice versa, whatever. Um, you can be totally different. Yeah. Very true. You and know, and even of, different genres because you're yeah. used to writing contemporary, I'm right. used to writing fantasy. It's amazing how you can take the different tools and skills that you've developed and really allow them to work together. Yeah, it's very cool. I'm, I'm uh, delayed because I'm drinking this amazing latte you made me. Yeah, um, I do make a good latte. <clears throat> she does. <laughs> Speaking of being different, the next question is, how do you deal with your ideas if they're completely opposite? Or what if your ideas clash? Like, how do you come to an agreement <laughs> <clears throat> if your ideas are clashing? Hmm. I feel Which like we've never really we've... had a clashing yeah, idea. I don't think we've experienced that a lot. Usually, like, we'll come up with an idea. And I'll be like, 
how about this, but I'm not sure about it. Yeah, it's like we're kind of looking to each other to build off of ideas rather than like, I want to do this. Well, I don't want to do that. It's more like, okay, well, that doesn't quite work with what I have. Right. But we can make it work, you know, like we yeah. can adjust it. We more like throw out ideas. Yeah. Um, neither one of us are very bossy with the writing process. Yeah. We're more like, oh, what about this? What about this? What about this? And then we just like put all this stuff on the table. Mm -hmm. You know, and see like what parts and pieces are working, what pieces are like, you know, exactly having issues and then we iron it all out. Um, I think mostly just talking about it, talk out an idea is what prevents the clashing from happening. I think clashing happens from miscommunication. Yeah. From one person just developing an idea on their own and being like, oh, I'm going to develop this whole thing and then yeah. drop it like a bombshell. Like, hey, you know, here's this whole thing. And then it's like, whoa, well, I'm not okay with all that. You know yeah. what I mean? So I think if you have a lot of communication from the the inception of your idea, mm. instead of developing it all on your own, that prevents clashing with the yeah. co-author. Yeah. Because they get to be part of the development rather than just, here's my thing. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, here's what you need to write. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, no one responds yeah. well to like, here's right. what you need to write. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's a huge element is like being open-minded. Yeah. You know, and, and respectful of the other person. Right. And that, and their creativity. And like I said, leaving gaps even in your planning process and your outline and your plot and being like, or, or if I come up with an idea for like your chapter, mm -hmm. how I'll just be like, what do you think of this? Yeah, and also respect, right, and how I think we have a huge respect for each other's characters, too, yeah. because I'm constantly asking you, like, okay, does this sound like your character? Does this sound like his voice? What do you think of this, you know? Yeah. Is the, would you say that differently? Yeah. And constantly checking with that, or if there's a certain, like, relationship dynamic being like, okay, you know, is this what you envisaged for that? Or should I change the way they're communicating? Is this the vibe that you want that character to have? Like, even how I checked with one of the sub characters, I'm like, what is her style? Yeah. <laughs> you know, would she wear this color? Would she wear this style outfit? And stuff like that. And just really respecting, like, if someone came up, if the other author came up with a certain character and it's like their brainchild, checking with them and having that communication rather than just like, oh, I'm going to, you know, put that there. And then you can see it later and be like, mm, that's not really what I thought, but you know. Yeah, exactly. And, and if you're working with a, if you're like co-writing with somebody who's not like within your actual proximity, <laughs> if they're like across the country or something or right. even across the world, then you can do the same thing by like leaving notes in the document that you share, like little comments and stuff. And, or even leaving certain areas blank and being like, you know, here, you should write in like whatever you think of this for the description of this character, whatever. But I think like what you, what you just um, mentioned about like having a brainchild, <laughs> that's, I think another important dynamic of this is like, having each each co-author should have like not their own characters and their own plots but obviously you share the characters and the plots but having a, a more personal attachment to certain characters and plots yeah which will make it feel more like your own sort of like yes. that you can get excited about writing it not just like oh this is you know so and so came up with all of this or whatever or we have to like share everything 50 50 yeah you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's kind of it's like a very nuanced thing like because we are sharing characters and plots but there are certain characters and plots that i know you've brainstormed more and then there are certain ones i know i've brainstormed more right and so that's, I think, part of what gets us excited to write it. Yes. Is having those things that you, like, constantly are turning over in your mind and yeah. enriching. For sure. Yeah, I think having your favorites and the things, yeah. the characters, the plots, like you were saying, that you've invested more time into can get help get you excited about. So it becomes more of, like, it's, it's a team effort, but it also has individuality to yes it. exactly that makes sense. yeah exactly another good question that's more like in general is what is a good quality to look for in a co-writer 
for someone who's interested in actually co-writing a book with somebody. I think someone who is excited about the story and passionate about it and sees meaning in it. Yeah. Because... It matters to them. <laughs> yeah, it has to matter to them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, obviously, if it's someone you also jive with to some degree. Yeah, like you have to be good. You have to work well like, together. Yeah, you got to be able to like vibe with that person. Yeah. And, um, and then beyond that, they have to just be excited about the story because if you have someone who's like kind of yeah we can try that it won't last for them and then you'll end up either it'll crash or you'll have to write the whole thing yourself so i think that if you have someone who's like consistently stays passionate about it that's that's a good quality to look for yeah I, I agree. And, and staying passionate together and working together well, those are two like must haves. Um, yes. Do you ever surprise each other with something you write? It's kind of on the flip, flip side of like what we're just saying about uh, being respectful of the other person's ideas. Yeah. But we do have like little moments where I think we like surprise small each other. surprises. Yeah, small surprises. Small surprises. Those are good. <laughs> Big surprises, not so good. Yeah, but like I think ones. I write like a lot of good, yeah. like funny one liners that you're like, oh, yeah. that's really I didn't expect that. Or I love the like, way you did that with the way your take on that. Right. Yeah. No, like big bombshell surprise that are like, oh, <laughs> plot twist. Plot twist. <laughs> We're gonna write it this way. But small, yeah. small surprises are good. I think it keeps the process vibrant. Yeah, and it's good to let your co-writer, I think, feel that they are free to take a different like path or free to try something new mm-hmm. and surprise you in a small way. Right. Um, so that they don't feel like boxed in. Yeah. You know. At the same time, I feel like we don't surprise each other that much though. No. Because well, like, we're last- like, <laughs> we just know each other too well. We're <laughs> like so predictable to each other that there's like, it's almost hard to surprise each other. Yeah. You true. know what I mean? True. But like, like, the last I've- chapter you wrote, there was like a little bit of a, took a little unexpected turn in one of the right. scenes that I was like, yeah. oh, I didn't see that coming, but that was cool. Right. And so I think one of the are... things that was funny when I was writing that though is because I know you so well that I kind of are, I already knew like how you would react to it and I'm like oh I don't even really need to ask her if this is okay because I already know how she's going to react to it yeah. based off of everything based off of you know all the years of knowing you since you were born I can predict that you'll like that small plot twist yes but um otherwise you can get to know someone based off of their writing process and whatever and also if you have a co-writer that's like hey you know i really hate anything being different from like this outline or what we discussed then just discuss it with them first you know to keep feelings you know vibing with good energy yeah i agree another question that came in was is it easier or harder to write a book together and like we said earlier, it definitely goes by faster as far it's as easier. Like, like, adding it's more unreal. words. It's unreal. Like all the all, all my ideas, you like will write them down. I don't have to think about them. It's unbelievable. I'm like the little the little uh, plotter angel sitting on yeah, your shoulder taking like, notes. I'll literally be like, okay, Abs, what was I supposed to write in this chapter? I emailed you a little bullet point write up. Okay, thanks. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's like uh, amazing. Now, I re- when I'm writing by myself, granted, I don't plot it out like that. So it's a whole right. different experience. And it's not like I'm like, oh, I can't remember anything because I just I write from more of a visionary perspective. Um, yeah, whatever. But uh, yeah, it's just it makes it so convenient. Because if I'm like, oh, you know, I'm stuck on something, Abby usually has an answer to it. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing with like, I get my own like private Ask Abby episode <laughs> <laughs> with unlimited amounts of questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing with like, well, a lot of times when I'm writing a book on my own, I will, you know, come to you and we can brainstorm together and I can ask right. you questions and be like, oh, I'm kind of stuck with this area or like, I'm not sure if I should do this or that. What do you think? And being able to discuss that usually helps me to like see a way. Yeah. And um, so with writing th- this book with you, it's been like, that's kind of every step of the process. And so even when I'm outlining and I'm like, uh, I don't really know what to do here. I don't know wh- which direction this should take. I'm just like, I'll ask Katie about it later, mm. and I know we'll come up with an answer. Yeah. Like, it, it's kind of this nice sense of assurance of, like, yeah. I don't have to, like, 
make myself think about this and figure out this problem and I don't have to like brainstorm too hardcore on this because us brainstorming together usually yeah. ends up being better. <laughs> right. And so. it's interesting too when you think about the fact we've already done that for our own personal writing projects forever. Yeah. Like yeah. we've always read each other our books usually as we're writing them. I'll be like, oh, hey, want to read my new chapter tonight? I'll read it to you, whatever. And then we discuss it and we'll iron out things and I'll be like, oh, hey, what do you think of this idea? What do you think of this idea? You'll do the same thing with me. So we're already so used to doing that that I feel like moving over into writing a book together is like so seamless because we're already so used to bouncing ideas off of each other. Yeah, I agree. Um, Let's see. I think we covered like so many of these questions. How much time do we have left? Okay, <laughs> not much. Um, okay, let's let's wrap up with this question. What is your favorite part of writing with your sister? <sighs> Being able to just bask in her writing genius is a huge plus. It's also wicked fun. It, like I said, my favorite part would probably be how it feels more like an interactive experience. Not only is Abby a fantastic writer, and it's just awesome to be able to write with someone who is fantastic at writing, but to have it be this interactive, fun experience where it's almost like you are that character and you get to react in a r- almost more realistic way because you actually are reacting to things the other character is doing without you knowing every single step because the other person is writing the other character. Makes yeah. it more fun. Yeah, it is really fun. What I about feel I, I feel the same way. And you're <laughs> an incredible writer too. So it's been, it's, it is so amazing to co-write a book with you. And it's going to be amazing to write even more of these in the series. But yeah, I would say that the, mo- the f- my favorite part is being able to like develop these ideas together, brainstorm together and create something that both of us couldn't have made on our own. Mm, like I often think about it. that of like, this is so cool because it's like, I couldn't have thought of all this on my own and you probably wouldn't have thought of all right. that on your own either. So it's like together we're creating something that is something that we couldn't have made on our own. That's a really cool way to look at that. I love that. So it's like, it's very unique. The whole experience is unique and the end product is going to be super unique. And Mm -hmm. like you said, the interactive feeling of like, oh no, I get to, you know, respond to that sort of. Yeah. And also just like, I really look forward to letting, having you read the next chapter. Yes. (laughs) It's like a great incentive to continue writing. It is. It's so much fun because you don't have to wait until the whole book is over. It's like, hey, want to get together and read some chapters tonight? It's so much fun. Yeah, it is. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So much fun. Highly recommend if you have somebody in your life who you're thinking of co-writing a book with them. Try it out. I think you'll like it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that's in a nutshell, quite a bit about our co-writing process. We're so excited to share this book yes. with you guys and stay tuned on both of our channels and our social media because we're going to be talking about it a lot more in future plus when it's coming out, which we don't have a release date now, obviously, because <laughs> it is still in the works. Early stages. Early days, yeah. But it's going to be good and we're so excited to share it with you guys. So Great questions, by the yeah, way. Thank you, guys. Questions. Those are really good questions. Thank you for the awesome questions. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. If you did, hit the like button if you're on YouTube. If you're not on YouTube, check out the video version of this podcast, which is on Kate's YouTube channel, and that is youtube.com slash K-A-M-N-S. And thank you again to our amazing patrons for supporting this show and keeping it alive and free of interruptions. If you get value out of this podcast, go to patreon.com slash the Kate and Abby show and help us out. Until next time, guys, stay stoked and rock on.